Spanish and English. There wasn't a button to, that changed these, it was just random. The family has owned the doll for more than six years and never changed its battery. The mother says the doll would randomly be, begin to speak, speak and sing even with its switch turned off. The family decided to throw the creepy doll out in December of 2019. Weeks later, they found it inside a bench in their living room. The kids insisted they didn't put it there, and I believed them because they wouldn't have dug through the garbage outside. Majonia and K is called KPRC2 Houston News. Wow. At that point, Elsa C Elsa C to the same English version of Vertigo. Altogether, speaking only Spanish when pressed the fair when pressed. The family doubled, then doubled, double bagged the bizarre bizarre doll and placed it at the bottom bottom of their garment. Which was taken out of the or out on garden garbage day. They went on a trip shortly after, but when they returned, Elsa too had come back. Wow! And was waiting in the backyard of their home. Wow! And this time, the family family mailed Elsa to a family friend in Minnesota, who taped the haunted doll to the front bumper of his truck. It didn't seem to have. Have made its way back to Houston yet. As per Madonna's latest uh, February Facebook update on the TV show. Wow. Okay, then. That is creepy. Not just because, you know, it, it's a haunted doll, but it's a haunted Elsa doll, which just proves that Frozen is evil. Shut your mouth. Oh, shut. Actually, I can beat that story. Oh, well, I have one more story, so you uh, no, no, I, not with one of the stories I planned. I can beat that story, and I can do it in probably about 60 seconds. I have a friend, a comedian named Dan Cummins, and he mentions this on one of his albums, but, or, or what do we call them, CDs, what, whatever. Yes. Anyway, he mentions this in one of his comedy specials, but as I understand it, it is a true story. There's a movie, and it was remade years later, but it's a movie called Poltergeist. And at one point in the movie Poltergeist, this kid has a puppet, this weird clown doll that attacks him. It, like, wraps its arms around him and chokes him and stuff. Well, when Dan was a kid, he had that exact same doll. And his parents really didn't monitor what he watched. So he watched Poltergeist, and he lived in terror of this doll. So... One day he decides he's had it. He cannot live with this doll anymore. So he beats the tar out of it, right? And he throws it in the trash. Unbeknownst to him, his mom finds it and says, Oh, there's my son's favorite doll. He must have thrown it in the trash by mistake. So she digs it out of the trash, cleans it up, puts it back in his room in the rocking chair. And when he gets home... He comes, because, you know, he's school, he comes home. There's the doll sitting in the rocking chair. And he screamed like a little girl with a skin knee. <laughs> he said legitimately it was one of the most terrifying moments of his life. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. So, it's not a supernatural story, but for a moment, he sure thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you seriously need to check out this, um website itself because a lot of these facts are really really interesting so i had to go to the fourth one instead of the third one that i was gonna do i see now this is this all came from esquire.com yes excellent this okay. all came from esquire.com and i did it in like not even five minutes oh i looked over it real quick i was just like no bad words, no meaning of bad adult stuff. We, we appreciate that. We appreciate that you work We're good hard to, go. to keep it PG-12 for, for our show. <laughs> Mostly for me. <laughs> All right. This third one is called Dead Animals in the Wall. Ooh. 
Okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> when the Dreyfus family decided to insulate their home in Auburn, Pennsylvania, in 2015, they discovered that it had already been with scores of dead animal carcasses. Ooh. As Fox reported, the dead animals were wrapped in newspapers from the 1930s and 40s and were among half-used spices and other items. After removing the items, they sent hundreds of artifacts and carcasses to an expert in Cusstown. It's Cusstown. <laughs> Did you like my little voice? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> the expert attribute, attributed the rotting animals in their walls to watch pow to watch on them. Okay. To to, to powwow or Dutch mad, magic. A ritual a ritual or originating in the culture of the Pennsylvania Pennsylvania Dutch to treat a line of alignment Ailments. 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 Mm-hmm. And gain physical and spirit- spiritual protection. Wow. The Pennsylvania Dutch were a group of German speaking settlers to Pennsylvania in the 1600s and 1700s. And are often of the Luther. Luther? Lutheran. Lutheran? Mid- Midnight. Mennonite. Mennonite, okay. Mennonite or St. Amish faith. Amish. Amish. Oh my goodness, you have to correct me sometimes. Amish. You're all right, you're learning. Krista, okay, it's you're fine, you're learning, and these are very specific religious terms that most people don't encounter, so it's fine. Uh, the only one you've said that has wide usage is Amish, and we just don't have enough Amish stuff around here because we did. I'd go to the Amish store once a month at least. They have tons of good stuff they sell. The Washington Post notes on the magic. Many spells of all of, of the many of the spells deal with the care of livestock, finding water, or treatment of minor ailments. Al- Ailments. Ailments. Okay, ailments. Reflect, reflecting the conditions and concerns of early, early American settlers. Settlers. But powwow also has within it a tradition of darker spells and even such things as conjuring demons. One notable ritual in their tradition is this. Is this text to create loyalty in a dog? To attach a dog to attach a dog to a person, provided nothing else was used before to affect it. Try to draw draw some of your blood and let it let the dog feed it along with its food. You will stay with. The, the mold found on the rotten carcasses in the Bretta's home has caused illness among the four family members, and they say that the odor hasn't gone away. Gross. Gross, gross. That's it? That's, that. yeah, that's Okay, it. I just didn't want to... See... <laughs> Science and medicine, well, science and medicine weren't always linked. Yeah. And so, like, years ago, Krista, your, your, your Hashimoto syndrome, uh, or it's not, what is it? It's Hashimoto's disease. You're, yeah. it, they wouldn't have treated it with levothyroxine. They would have treated it by bleeding you or by giving you the mummy dust to, to, to eat. You. So, yeah, it, it wasn't until, the introduction of the scientific method into the methodology of medicine that we actually started to get cures that worked. I mean, some stuff worked, like white willow bark was known to be, and white willow bark is really where we get aspirin. 
uh, and and it would help fight infections, and it would help in healing, and it would it would help against fevers. But by and large, it was trial and error, and and just it wasn't a, a great system. So yeah, and and the fact that the, the the Pennsylvania Dutch did that, but it's better than the mental health things they used to do because like in the nineteen twenties. If you went into a mental hospital, they might have thought, well, her mind's out of balance, so we got to put her, her uh, do something to her body to affect her mind. And so they might like chop off two figure, fingers. Well, it didn't, but it was just, it was, it, mental illness was not understood, and it was a lot of guesswork. I mean, they used to try shock therapy, but not like with electric shock, but rather they would take you and put you in a chair and then just dump you in cold water, as cold as you could stand or colder, and then pull you back up and then dunk you again and pull you back up, thinking that the shock would eventually put you back into a place of better thinking but that you didn't, that you weren't so crazy. That make it work. I, I agree. That would make it worse and possibly kill you because, you know, all that cold water followed by cold air is likely to lead to illness, so. Exactly. What do you think, Mom? You've been kind of quiet. I agree with you. That is definitely a scary way to try to take care of somebody. You know, I thought the weirdest one of all, all the three that I did was the, um, the mansion. The, Vales the Valeska Axe House? Yeah. I think that's a little weird, but it's a haunting. And like I said, I think it might be part of a larger pattern. My but favorite it's... one, though, was um, the haunted doll. <laughs> I do, too. But I think we should let it go. Oh, my goodness, Dad. No more puns for you. <laughs> Mom's better at puns. You're better at real jokes. Just keep it spread apart. How dare... Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm so put upon here. All right. No, that's what everybody happens when you have a passing child, but can't let it out for years on end until you figure this out. You are a sassy child, and I love that about you. I hope. So, hun? Yeah? I, I knew you were going to do that. Is it my turn? Well, if you follow your show notes, you'll see. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't. I try not to follow the show notes. I like to be surprised. Well, uh, surprise, right. Surprise, it's my turn. <laughs> yep, surprise, it's your turn. See how, see how much more fun that is? It is. It's a lot of fun. But then again, everything with you is fun. I know. I'm, I'm a barrel of monkeys minus the monkeys in the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the rest of it in? Where's the rest of it then? Into space? Pretty much. <laughs> Don't let a lunatic person go in your house and it's totally empty. They're gonna make mess things up. I do not care if it's completely empty. Like, no nothing. Well, the lunatic's in there. Something's gonna happen. Oh. Okay, so I've got some stories. Mm. We're kind of legends. Mm. Okay, so, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm gonna do these, uh, well, okay, that's fine. Just remember, since you don't have the show notes, let me point out that from here on out, it's your story. I'll do a couple. Your story. Oh, okay. No, I'm not looking at the show notes, so I guess we get to take turns. Yes. <laughs> okay. See, that's what I was going to say. Like, mix my stories in between your few. Okay. So this first one... This first one's definitely a legend, but it's the kind of thing that people tell has happened to them. And so this is just another, this is another take on that. So this first legend is the legend of the vanishing gate. Okay. Which I think has been told many times and been the subject of songs and that sort of thing. But we'll tell this one. <laughs> so... There was a young man, and his name, for sake of argument, was Scott. And Scott was at a Halloween party. 
at a bar near the campus where he went to college. 